Hi friends, welcome again to my channel Critical Catalyst. We have started discussion on hemodynamic monitoring and in last video I have discussed about arterial line and intra-arterial blood pressure measurement system. If you have not seen my previous video, please check the link given below. Today I will discuss about pulmonary artery catheter. Pulmonary artery catheter is also known as Swan Gans catheter because it was introduced by Dr. H. J. C. Swan and William Gans in 1970 for the management of critically ill patients. However, over the last decade, lesser invasive techniques have been developed, resulting in reduced use of this catheter. The pulmonary artery catheter is constructed from polyvinyl chloride and has a pliable shaft that softens further at body temperature. Because polyvinyl chloride has a high thrombogenicity, the catheters are generally coated with heparin. The standard catheter length is 110 cm. The most commonly used external diameter is 5 or 7 French. The catheter is marked at 10 cm increment to aid insertion. A balloon is fastened 1 to 2 mm from the tip and when inflated, it guides the catheter by virtue of fluid dynamic drag. When fully inflated, the balloon protrudes above the catheter tip, thus distributing these forces over large area and minimizing the chances for endocardial damage or arrhythmia during catheter insertion. Variety of catheter present in the clinical practice. This is 5 lumen catheter and consists of pulmonary artery distal port used to transduce pressure. The balloon inflation port for inflation and deflation of balloon. The thermistor port is fine wire that lead to temperature thermistor which is located 4 cm proximal to the tip. The proximal port usually 30 cm from the catheter tip is intended for right arterial pressure measurement. The right ventricle infusion port is fifth port which can be used for infusion and occasionally for pacing the right ventricle. But according to some books, fifth port opens 40 cm from the tip of the catheter and it's for central venous access for fluid and medication infusions. This is 4 lumen catheter. The 3 lumen and 2 lumen catheters are also available. The indications for pulmonary artery catheter are divided into diagnostic and therapeutic indications. Pulmonary artery catheter is indicated for differentiating cardiogenic, hypovolemic, distributive or obstructive shock. It is also used for differentiating between cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. For evaluation of pulmonary hypertension, for diagnosis of pericardial tamponade and left to right intracardiac shunt, also used for the management of the perioperative patient with unstable cardiac status, for complicated myocardial infarction, for patient following cardiac surgery, and for patient of severe preeclampsia. It is also used to guide the pharmacological and non-pharmacological therapy for fluid management in patient with burn, renal failure, sepsis and heart failure. Absolute contraindication to pulmonary artery catheter placement include infection at the insertion site, presence of right ventricular assist device, insertion during cardiopulmonary bypass, right-sided endocarditis, arterial myxoma, tricuspid or pulmonary hall replacement, and lack of consent. Relative contraindications include coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, electrolyte disturbances, severe acid-based disturbances, left bundle branch block, and tricuspid regurgitation. While a bleeding diathesis increases the risk of hemorrhage, electrolyte and acid-based disturbances increases the risk of persistent life-threatening arrhythmias. And in patient with left bundle branch block, chances of complete heart block are there. The sites for insertion of pulmonary catheter include internal jugular, subclavian, femoral, anticubital, basilic or brachial vein. Prefer to use right internal jugular vein or the left subclavian vein. Femoral and anticubital vein are generally avoided but can be used when no other access is available. Insertion of the introducer. Following site selection, the patient should be positioned in the Trendelenburg position for jugular or subclavian approach or supine position for femoral or anticubital approach. 
an introducer is a wide bore 8.5 french short central venous catheter through which a pulmonary artery catheter is placed the proximal end contains a hemostatic wall through which the pulmonary artery catheter is eventually introduced to the target vein the confirmation of the introducer placement inside the target vein should be done before the pulmonary artery catheter is placed option includes fusulization of the dark blood lacking a pulsatile flow transduction of the pressure wave form from the catheter and blood glass analysis none of which is full proof insertion of the pulmonary artery catheter is generally done according to modified seldinger technique the modified seldinger technique is shown in this figure insertion of the pulmonary artery catheter preparing of the catheter is done by flushing and connecting the ports under sterile condition the catheter should be removed from the package all ports should be capped and flushed with sterile saline the balloon should be inflated to test for the leak it should inflate symmetrically without obstructing the opening of the distal lumen this figure shows the balloon at full inflation volume and the balloon at less than full inflation volume if the balloon is at less than full inflation volume the tip of the catheter protrudes beyond the balloon the pulmonary artery catheter must be appropriately zeroed and referenced to obtain accurate reading zeroing involves the opening the system to the air to establish atmospheric pressure at zero referencing or leveling is done at phlebostatic axis zeroing and leveling is well explained in my previous video on arterial line checking transducer function the pressure transducer function can be confirmed by waving the distal catheter tip gently which should result in sinusoidal wave form on the monitor advancing the catheter pulmonary artery catheters are positioned using either pressure wave form or fluoroscopic guidance pressure wave form guidance is the more common approach fluoroscopic guidance is less commonly performed in this technique the catheter is visualized by fluoroscopy as it is advanced and balloon inflation is not necessary until the catheter reaches the pulmonary artery sometimes transesophageal echocardiography can be used while advancing the catheter it is useful to keep in the mind the rule of 10 where anatomic and hemodynamic changes occur at approximately 10 cm intervals for example when the insertion site is internal jugular or subclavian vein the right atrium is generally entered after inserting the catheter 20 cm the right ventricle after inserting 30 cm the pulmonary artery after inserting 40 cm and the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure after inserting 50 cm the balloon should only be inflated after the svc or ra has been reached the inflation is normally made with the small amount of resistance excessive resistance usually indicate malposition of the catheter tip little resistance suggests rupture of the balloon inserting the catheter into the svc or ra the balloon may be inflated once the pressure tracing indicate that the tip of the catheter is in the svc or ra the balloon should not be inflated inside the transducer the normal mean right atrial pressure is between 0 to 7 mm of mercury once the balloon is inflated the catheter is advanced slowly when the catheter tip is advanced across the tricuspid wall the pressure wave form changes and the systolic pressure increases the normal right ventricular diastolic pressure is 3 to 12 mm of mercury and peak systolic pressure is 15 to 25 mm of mercury if a right ventricular wave form is not observed after inserting the catheter 40 cm coiling in the right atrium is likely in this situation the balloon should be deflated the catheter withdraws to 20 cm following which advancement should be repeated with the balloon inflated this is the graphical representation of the transition of pulmonary artery catheter and respective changes in the wave form when the catheter reaches in the right atrium the wave form is like the central venous pressure when the catheter reaches in the right ventricle the wave form changes and systolic blood pressure increases when the catheter enter into the pulmonary artery the wave form changes and diastolic blood pressure increases and the diacritic notch appears and when the balloon 
wages the pulmonary artery the waveform changes and pressure drops it again look like the waveform in right atrium but little higher pressure because it represent the pressure of the left atrium the risk of arrhythmia is greatest while the catheter tip is in the right ventricle thus the catheter should be advanced from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery without delay when the catheter tip passes across the pulmonary wall the diastolic pressure increases and a diacritic notch appears in the waveform the normal pulmonary artery systolic pressure is 15 to 25 mm of mercury and the pulmonary artery diastolic pressure is 4 to 15 mm of mercury if more than 30 cm to 40 cm of the catheter has been inserted and the pressure tracing still indicates that the tip is within the right ventricle then the catheter is probably coiling in the right ventricle or the right ventricle is enlarged once the catheter tip has reached the pulmonary artery it should be advanced until the pulmonary capillary occlusion pressure is identified by decrease in the pressure combined with the changes in the waveform the balloon should then be deflated and the pulmonary artery tracing should reappear the normal mean pulmonary capillary occlusion pressure is between 4 to 12 mm of mercury if less than 1 ml of air is required to obtain a pulmonary capillary occlusion pressure tracing the tip of the catheter is probably in the distal pa that is overwage and further inflation may lead to vessel rupture the catheter should be withdrawn 0.1 to 0.5 cm with the balloon deflated and then balloon is reinflated with 1 to 1.5 ml of the air to check the position this diagram shows the changes in the pressure while transition of the catheter from right atrium to pulmonary capillary wedge pressure the pulmonary capillary occlusion pressure is best measured with the patient in the supine position at the end expression because at end expression all intrathoracic pressures are equal to atmospheric pressure which allows the pulmonary capillary occlusion pressure to be accurately measured regardless of the whether the patient is spontaneously breathing or mechanically ventilated after the pulmonary artery catheter has been secured a chest radiograph should be obtained to confirm the position of the catheter the catheter tip should ideally be located in the zone 3 and should cross the midline by no more than 3 to 5 cm how we are the chest radiograph is not specific the lung can be divided into three physiological zones of blood flow these zones are based upon the alveolar pressure mean pulmonary artery pressure and pulmonary capillary pressure the tip of the catheter should ideally be positioned in zone 3 that is below the level of left atrium such that pulmonary artery occlusion pressure will be overestimated if placed in zone 1 or 2 direct measurement of the following parameter can be obtained from the accurately placed pulmonary artery catheter which include central venous pressure right sided intracardiac pressure pulmonary artery pressure pulmonary artery occlusion pressure which is also called as pulmonary capillary wedge pressure or pulmonary artery wedge pressure cardiac output and mixed venous oxygen saturation the pulmonary artery catheter can also be indirectly measures the following parameters like systemic vascular resistance pulmonary vascular resistance cardiac index stroke volume index left ventricular stroke work index right ventricular stroke work index oxygen delivery and oxygen intake the pulmonary artery catheter measures the cardiac output via either the indicator thermodilution method or the pick method the preferred expression of cardiac output is cardiac index which is calculated by dividing the cardiac output by the body surface area in the case of thermodilution the indicator is approximately 5 ml of either dextrose or saline that is cooler than the blood is injected as a bolus through the proximal port of the pulmonary artery catheter where it mixes with the blood in the right ventricle the mixing lowers the temperature of the intraventricular blood as the blood flows past the distal thermistor port located in the tip of the catheter in the pulmonary artery the thermistor records the temperature changes over time and can electronically display a temperature time curve using this temperature time curve cardiac output can be calculated by using area under the curve in tricuspid regurgitation lead to an underestimation of cardiac output right to left and left to right intracardiac shunt 
can produce falsely elevated cardiac output measurement by the thermodilution technique. The weak method of calculating the cardiac output requires the oxygen saturation measurement in the pulmonary artery and arterial system. Weak cardiac output can be calculated using the formula oxygen consumption divided by 10 multiplied by arteriovenous oxygen difference. Oxygen consumption is either measured by axial breadth analysis or estimated from the nomogram that is based upon age, sex, height and weight. The arteriovenous oxygen difference requires additional calculation and which is calculated using this formula. In post insertion care, a sterile technique should be used when injecting drugs, connecting tubing or repositioning the catheter if it is migrated. Dressing should be changed routinely and site should be checked daily for the signs of erythema or purulent exudate that might indicate infection. There are three categories of complications related to use of pulmonary artery catheter. Those related to insertion of pulmonary artery catheter. Those related to maintenance and use of pulmonary artery catheter. And those related to interpretation of hemodynamic data derived from pulmonary artery catheter. The complications related to insertion of the pulmonary artery catheter which are similar to the central line insertion complication. The complications are divided into immediate and delayed. Immediate complications include bleeding, arterial puncture, arrhythmias. Arrhythmias can be arterial or ventricular arrhythmias commonly occur during passage of the catheter to the cardiac chamber. Sustained ventricular arrhythmias occur in up to 3% of the patient. Air embolism, thoracic duct injury, catheter malposition, pneumothorax, hemothorax and knotting. Myocardial vessel and wall rupture can also occur and delayed complication include infection, venous thrombosis, pulmonary emboli, venous stenosis, catheter malfunction, catheter migration, catheter embolization, myocardial perforation and nerve injury. Complications associated with use and maintenance of the catheter include pulmonary artery perforation, pulmonary infarction, thromboembolic event, infection and others. Other complications include sterile cardiac wall visitations and venous ear embolism. Data misinterpretation. Pulmonary artery catheter derived hemodynamic data can be inaccurate or misinterpreted for several reasons like improperly calibrated or labeled pressure monitor, transduction of the airway pressure under non-zone 3 conditions, inter-observer variability in the interpretation of the hemodynamic data. Removal. The pulmonary artery catheter can be removed as a separate procedure to the introducer removal. For subclavian or jugular catheter removal, the patient should be placed in slight Trendelenburg position. With the balloon deflated, the catheter should be removed during exhalation in the spontaneously breathing patient or during inspiration in the patient undergoing positive pressure ventilation. This is to prevent the air embolism. The catheter should not be withdrawn against the resistance. Resistance during the catheter withdrawal may indicate that the catheter is entangled in the cardiac structures. Following catheter removal, the introducer can be used as a central venous catheter for administration of the fluids and medications if necessary. Alternatively, it can be replaced with the fresh central venous catheter or removed completely. These are my references. And hello friends, if you want to revise any part of this video, you can look into the table of content which is given in the description box. And also if you want to see my previous video, the link is given in the description box. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel for getting update regarding my next video.